What's up guys, 80s Revolution back with another video. Tonight we are picking up where we left off with Galoob, WCW Galoob wrestling figures. We did part one, which was series one, the UK or the US releases, and now we're going to do series two, which were UK exclusives. Uh, I'm feeling a little lighter tonight. I don't know what's going on. I don't feel as heavy. I don't feel as hot. Uh, I don't know. I can't put my finger on it quite exactly. Ah, that's right. Of course, the uh, the lovely flowing lady locks are now a thing of the past. Yes, I have shaved my head. I, uh, I pretty much wanted to grow long hair since I was about 10 and could never pull it off because I had the, uh, you know, the biggest, thickest hair in the world, and so I just couldn't get past like certain stages. But, you know, I went for it this time. I grew it about a year and a half, and uh, eh, I just got tired of it. It was thick. Hair would fall out all over the house. Off it goes. But in lieu, in replace of the hair, bringing the beard back. So it's well on its way. About a week old now, so check that out on the 80s Revolution Fashion Files channel. That's right. Let's do Galoob Series 2 UK exclusives. What makes this line both so wonderful and so tragic is that this was only the second batch of figures released. The last batch of figures released. And here in the States, we get the Galoobs. Some of us fall madly in love with the Galoobs and then there are no more Galoobs. I certainly had no way of getting these as a kid and did not collect them until I was an adult collector. So, uh, but the beauty of them is that they're fantastic and they're great characters and I love them. So let's go through what we have. First, the uh, obvious repaints and then we'll get into the newer characters or the new, uh, the uh, non repaints. Uh, first repaint, uh, the Steiner Brothers. This is one of the repaints that actually makes sense in the UK series. Nothing wrong with these figures. Good paint, you know, patterns. Rick and Scott easily could have worn these outfits. So I have no problem with this repaint of the Steiner Brothers UK release. Uh, <laughs> and some that I do have problems with. Uh, I told you in the last video that Ric Flair Galoob is my all-time favorite wrestling figure. And, uh, geez, I didn't even know that Galoob could mess up Ric Flair, but they did. Here is the Ric Flair Galoob UK exclusive with his very well-worn and very popular red lightning bolt trunks. That's right. You remember when Ric Flair wore maroon trunks with a lightning bolt on them, right? No, of course not. Uh... Did we get the RF on the boots? Nope, we didn't even get the RF. So we got my favorite figure in pretty weird choice of, uh, of color. So I don't know what the UK exclusives were thinking. Hey, let's just, let's just paint whatever on these guys, ship them over there, and we'll, we'll fool everybody, right? Well, here's our UK exclusive Ric Flair, maroon with lightning bolt trunks. Uh, another weird repaint. I don't recall this guy ever wearing a pink outfit, but we have a very dirty Sid Vicious in the UK exclusive pink outfit. Great figure. Absolutely fantastic figure. Pink outfit. Never saw him actually... whatever. Um, another repaint that I don't understand. Uh, is Brian Pillman in baby blue or Carolina blue with these strange little Bengals or cats or lions or tigers or whatever on his knee pads. Don't recall ever seeing that. I don't know what they were going for or what they were coming up with. He's also got, I just noticed he's got like these, um, sort of scrape marks on his, claw marks on his boots. So maybe they were going with the, you know, Brian Pillman played for the Bengals. Maybe that's what they were going for here. Uh, what would the Cincinnati Bengals orange and black 
stripes, what would that mean in the UK? Nothing. Uh, so maybe they just went with baby blue and Bengal, you know, art on his figure. But Brian Pillman, UK exclusive, baby blue with Bengal-faced knee pads. Uh, very simple repaint. Uh, uh, Ron Simmons with more of a, uh, I don't know, what is that, like a cobalt blue? I think his other, his, U, his U.S. figure has royal blue or, or navy blue. Yeah, that's it, navy blue. This is more royal blue. And the only difference between this figure also in the U.S. version is this white stripe down the side. So here is the Ron Simmons UK exclusive. I do not have Butch Reed. I don't have a U.S. Butch Reed. I don't have a UK Butch Reed. So I need one of those. Now on to the interesting... Uh, well, here's here's kind of a... This definitely isn't a, a repaint. This is a totally brand new figure, new mold and everything. And it's actually a pretty awesome figure. This is the Sting UK exclusive in ring gear. And I don't remember this outfit. I want to say, like, um, I know Great American Bash 91, I think, was the red, white, and blue with these same tassels. I don't know where he wore this, but I remember Sting in this outfit um, from an early 90s WCW pay-per-view. But this is a pretty awesome pre-ring entrance gear Sting with a brand new face, too. He's got those, uh, this is a totally new figure. Totally new sting, new face, new look, new outfit. Thicker than the, uh, than the wrestling, you know, the ring gear figure. Uh, this is a pretty great figure. I like this a lot. UK exclusive sting. We're flying through these a little bit tonight. I don't have a lot of time. Uh, so they made, uh, well, I have five, uh, brand new characters that came out in series two. Uh, and I'm thrilled that every one of these figures, or every one of these guys, got a figure. Uh, but there's also a figure in here that I consider the worst of the batch. Um, I was very happy to see Michael Hayes and Jimmy Garvin get figures uh, released. Uh, this is Jimmy Garvin's second figure and his only, or his second, he only had two figures, uh, AWA and now the Galoobs, but Michael Hayes also with a figure. And this is the WCW's version of the Freebirds. Of course, Michael Hayes and Jimmy Garvin uh, found great success as the Freebirds in the NWA uh, slash WCW. Of course, Freebirds getting their start and their notoriety in Texas with Michael Hayes, Terry Gordy, and Buddy Roberts. And then WCW version, we've got Jimmy Garvin, who I've always liked. I think Jimmy Garvin was a great wrestler. He was a great persona. And I also, also liked Michael Hayes back then. I think he's a freaking weirdo today. I don't know if you've ever seen the way this guy dresses. But um, anyway, Michael Hayes, Jimmy Garvin. Uh, interesting poses. Um, not my favorite poses. I guess I would like Michael Hayes a little bit better than this sort of Jimmy Garvin hands. Why You know, his hands are kind of huge. Um, I don't quite get this pose, but they look decent together. And I'm, I love the fact that these guys got released. And in fact, the UK version of these um, came with a sound module uh, for the ring. Um, so they were packaged as a two pack with a uh, sound uh, box, which is pretty cool. And that, that goes for a nice chunk of money on the eBay. Uh, I think an amazing idea for a figure. Um, really glad to see that this guy. Uh, so when prior to Gold Dust, of course, Dustin Rhodes. Uh, broke into the WCW or NWA in uh, 1990, 91. Uh, jumped right in as Dusty Rhodes' son. There was no, you know, he didn't play a different character. He was always Dusty Rhodes' son. And this was his most um, sort of scientific, gimmick-free persona. This is the natural Dustin Rhodes. And he was basically just a younger version of his father uh, coming out with the, you know, cowboy gear and the boots. Great, great detail on those boots, by the way. And they do say Dustin on them, which is pretty cool. But I love this figure. I love the I love the leather vest. I love the detail. I love the paint. Good good facial scan or sculpt. And again, he's got that sort of Jimmy Garvin pose, which I don't quite understand. But um, to me, it works better for Dustin than it does for Jimmy Garvin. I really like this figure. This is probably one of my favorites of the batch. 
um, aside from that Ric Flair. But uh, love the Dustin Rhodes figure. Great figure. Pre-Gold Dust. Dustin Rhodes. Uh, interesting character, interesting era of WCW at the time. Uh, this is when WCW started to go more into the, you know, um, extraordinary characters, sort of cartoony, gimmicky characters. And a uh, lumberjack made his way into the WCW. And it was kind of like a hillbilly gym type gimmick where he didn't know how to wrestle, but he's wound up in a wrestling ring and got a job as a professional wrestler but he had to kind of learn how to wrestle in the ring and stumble around and make mistakes and that was the big josh character uh big josh was a lumberjack who carried an axe handle to the ring and would uh you know just just a backwoods tough guy apparently uh what's more interesting than this character is the fact that it was played by matt bourne who was a great wrestler in his time um great brawler um, didn't really reach the levels of success that he probably should have. Uh, but of course, his most famous run in wrestling was as Doink. So this, you are looking at a Matt Bourne figure pre-Doink. So we've got Big Josh in the NWA, WCW, and then, uh, I don't know what, around 93 or so, he went over the WWF and became a clown. Became Doink the Clown. Big Josh. One of my worst figures, uh, I don't know, one of, one of the worst wrestling figures of all time, for me anyways. Uh, I believe that this is, uh, yeah, probably one of the worst. This We've talked about El Gigante before, Jorge Gonzalez. Uh, we talked about him when we reviewed Hasbro's, and I showed you the giant Gonzalez figure. Well, this was his first foray, if you will, into wrestling. He was uh, El Gigante. The giant. Um, probably a legitimately close to eight feet tall wrestler. Um, and the only reason that he was a wrestler was that he was close to eight feet tall. Uh, he had absolutely no wrestling skill. Could not barely speak English. So his promos or attempts at promos were some of the most memorable and laughable uh, promos. If you remember, he was... He was sadly put into a very brief mini program with Ric Flair. And uh, there was a promo that he did where he basically just screamed into the microphone, I want the belt. Give me the belt. Elegante. Uh, huge figure. I mean, you know, we talk about scale all the time with Jackson Mattel and everybody complains about that. Uh, I think, you know, Galoob kind of got it right there. So... Imagine, imagine these two going at it on a. I think it was a Clash of the Champions where they, where they squared off. But what makes this figure absolutely terrible? I, I would have loved this figure if these arms were down or forward or outstretched. Uh, to have them straight up in the air like this makes no sense. It now becomes an unplayable figure. So, uh, and he's complete with that laser tag, you know, 1980s laser tag outfit, which, again, have no idea what they were going for there, but. Bad figure, bad character, rest in peace, Jorge Gonzalez, Elegante. Galoob Series 2, UK release only. Uh, Galoob released a couple of giant figures. I, I believe these are about 16 inches. Um, and I have two of them. So we've got Ric Flair, and looks like Lex Luger is staring lovingly at the Nature Boy. Let's just turn his head around there. We got Ric Flair and uh, Lex Luger. Uh, fine, good idea. You know, I don't, you know, I don't know what what the point of them is, and other than to just sort of have them sitting around. But what's cool is that they come with these massive belts. Uh, you know, these huge championship belts as well. So Lex Luger and Ric Flair, giant Galoob figures. And of course, we've got. One in the box. Ah, 14 inches. One in the box. This is Lex Luger in the box. Great looking Galoob packaging. The same carryover from the figures. On the back, you can see the four jumbo figures that they made. And this one, the Sid, the Sid Vicious figure, is a little bit less common uh, to come by, but certainly not overpriced. These are easy to come by. 
fairly inexpensive. I think this was about $40 at one time on eBay. And quickly, just to wrap this video up, a, a neat little item that I forgot existed, but I grabbed it off eBay a couple of years ago. This is the Galoob WCW Championship Belt uh, in a pretty cool packaging. Got this little kid here playing Sting. You got your championship belt, nice big package, colorful. And on the back, of course, every kid loved to take a look at the back. You've got, you know, um, you got the you got the the wrestlers, and you've got this beautiful WCW Galoob ring, which after all of these years has escaped me. I still don't have a WCW Galoob ring. I have the San Francisco Toymakers ring, which is quite similar. Comes with the red cage and all, but it's not the Galoob ring. So. The WCW Championship Belt set. That's it. Quickly, I went through Series 2 Galoobs. Hope you enjoyed. Leave comments, of course. On my next video, I want to say a couple hellos to some uh, fellow YouTubers and subscribers of mine who have uh, I consider friends of mine. We'll do that next time. Thanks for tuning in. A lot more to come. More reviews. Talk to you soon. Take care.